um, in thinking about this get together, sorry, in thinking about this get together, I um, realized that I perhaps have a unique perspective on uh, Dan Kodachek and his students in his labs. Um, I first came under Dan Dan's influence uh, 39 years ago as an undergraduate at Yale University. And um, the first year was 1983-84. Uh, first time Dan Kodashek changed the course of my life and career uh, was the fall of my senior undergraduate year, um, before many of you were born. Uh, it was September 83, and Dan posted signs around the campus engineering buildings announcing three things. I wish I had a copy of that sign. Number one, Yale had a new program in robotics. Two, he was offering to advise and sponsor, i.e. pay for, um, student projects in robotics. And then he would soon offer a new course in robotics. I was a mechanical engineering undergraduate student, uh, really without a mission or purpose, looking for one, and I drank the Kool-Aid. <laughs> Dan had recently completed his PhD with KS Narendra in May of 1983, and was then a newly minted assistant professor of electrical engineering. He had a faculty office. He had no graduate students. He had no lab. <laughs> um, in fall of 83, Dan very kindly agreed to supervise my senior essay project. Now, Yale has the senior essay thing. It's optional, and it's wonderful. It allows an undergraduate uh, to study almost anything in the universe for credit and count towards their degree um, under the guidance of a faculty advisor. My project as it developed was to uh, develop mechanical, electrical, hardware, and software and firmware to provide digital closed-loop feedback control of the front steering wheel of a primitive Heathkit hero robot. Uh, and I did that over the course of a semester with Dan's guidance. In spring of 1984, um, uh, my final semester as undergraduate, Dan offered Yale's first course in robotics. This was the most difficult course and most rewarding course of my undergraduate career because of mathematical rigor and extraordinary depth and breadth of subject matter. Each le lecture left us breathless. It was like drinking from a fire hose. We were mesmerized by the clarity of Dan's vision connecting the beauty of mathematical modeling and analysis to the practical problems of enabling robot systems to do useful work in the real world. Dan's brilliance and work ethic were inspiring, and he expected no less from his students. For those of us like me were, who were <clears throat> somewhat less than brilliant, he expected our full attention and our full and strenuous effort. Um, I had been a B student as an undergraduate. Um, I didn't have a clear direction or mission. While working on my senior essay project, and in the one robotics course that I ever took with Dan, I became an A student. Like many of Dan's students who pursued faculty careers, the first graduate course I created and taught as a new faculty member was modeled shamelessly and with permission on Dan's uh, robotics course at Yale. I've tried to propagate the scholarly academic culture I learned from Dan. And I've taught this course with continuous revisions and improvements many times over the 20 years, seven years I've been at Johns Hopkins University. Every time I teach it, I get a thrill. The second time Dan Kodashek changed the course of my life and career was in May of 1984, when I graduated with a BS ME. Um, at this time, I was being spectacularly unsuccessful at getting a job in the robotics industry. Dan very kindly introduced me. Uh, 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 very kindly hired me to work in his lab um, in summer of 84, during which I implemented a model-based closed-loop digital control system for a DC motor, power op amps, and a PDP-11 computer the size of a refrigerator. The, um, as I recall, Dan hired three summer interns that summer, and although he mentored each of us assiduously, none of us produced a publishable result. The lab was shared with K.S. Narendra and his students, including Anu Aswamy, Anu Anaswamy, who were then writing their seminal book, Stable Adaptive Systems. That summer, Dan lined me up for my first real job in robotics by introducing me to Chai Day, an R&D manager at GM Fanuc Robotics in Detroit. I interviewed, I got the job, and I spent the next two exhausting and exhilarating years at GM Fanuc um, during the first crazy boom in the robotics industry. Much to my surprise, I found myself actually contributing significantly to the development of a three-dimensional robotic uh, computer vision system and uh, developing and installing these systems in automotive factories at Ford, GM, and Chrysler throughout the Midwest. The third time that Dan Kodashek changed the course of my life and career was in 1986 when I applied to PhD programs in robotics. Dan admitted me into the PhD program in electrical engineering. He was taking a huge gamble given my less than spectacular undergraduate academic record. 
In the two years that I was at GM Fennec, Dan recruited two incredibly talented PhD students who I was in awe of. Um, uh, with them, he developed a robotics laboratory in the basement of Beckton Center. Martin Bueller was both talented analytically, and he was the first world-class lab warrior I'd ever met in my life. It was amazing. Uh, Martin was developing together with Dan um, and the electronic design genius Peter Kindleman, Professor Kin Peter Kindleman, a two-dimensional planar, planar juggling robot to test their theories in stable dynamic control in intermittent dynamical environments. Elon Riman was off the chart talented analytically. I could barely keep up with him, but he was perhaps less, uh, less talented in the lab. Um, he was developing with Dan gradient vector field potential functions for the holy grail problem of provably correct simultaneous planning and control of robotic tasks. Al Rizzi joined Dan's lab about a year later. Uh, Al focused his polymath theoretical design and experimental abilities on the problem of three-dimensional robot juggling, an extraordinary accomplishment, expanding upon Bueller's pioneering research. My own PhD research focused on the far more prosaic problem of model-based adaptive control of robot manipulators. After finishing my thesis, I had the immense good fortune to spend a short time working with Dan on the problem of encoding uh, uh, simple assembly tasks as uh, uh, task planning as gradient vector fields. Um, I never quite did get, get that proof to work um, and had to leave it behind. Um, uh, but happily, Ichio Bozma, who's in the back of the room right now, I just saw her walk in, a friend uh, from our graduate student days subsequently picked up this problem and together with Dan and her students solved it. So um, my original plan of record, uh, career goal has always been to complete a PhD, and I was planning to return to the robotics industry as a senior scientist or engineer. I was fortunate to do two postdocs with two very brilliant uh, people, including Suguru Arimoto, uh, who taught us about LaSalle's invariance theorem, and Danny Yorger at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. And with some misgivings and almost on a whim, I applied for one faculty position at Johns Hopkins University. I was offered one position. I took one position. <laughs> And I've loved every minute of it since then. So thus far, I've consistently failed at my original career goal. <laughs> to close, I'd like to say that Paradise must be very like the Kodashev lab of my graduate student years, a small but intensely vibrant research community of scholars where my colleagues were enthusiastically willing to share their knowledge with each other in active pursuit of the nascent synthetic science of programming work. I've tried to create this culture in my own lab group. In the mix of this lab were a great variety of undergraduate, graduate students, staff, faculty, like the aforementioned Peter Kindleman, who together with his brilliant artist wife, Marsha, took Dan's graduate students under their wing. We were, uh, we all were, and still are, in hot pursuit of a panoply of exploratory, theoretical, numerical, and experimental investigations toward developing the new engineering science of robotics. Thank you.